We've all seen massive wind turbines at some point in time, in a field in the countryside like this one, or as part of the vast offshore wind farms that will contribute to future of sustainable energy, powering our expanding global population. Wind turbines are indeed a very powerful way of harnessing the kinetic energy contained within moving air. We are currently at Westmill Wind Farm here near Swindon in the southeast of England. And behind me, you can see five big wind turbines, each 100 meters tall with a blade diameter of 60 meters, each producing 1.3 megawatts of power. But the problem is, at this size, you can't put them near urban populations, both due to noise pollution and because of the sheer size and how much area they take up. That is why there is currently a demand for small wind turbines. We were tasked with creating one of these small wind turbines, so we did design, manufacture, assembly and then finally testing in a wind tunnel. We will try and show you this process and the final result in this video. To begin with, we should probably ask ourselves what is actually a wind turbine? And perhaps more importantly, what is wind? Well, wind is simply air in motion with an associated kinetic energy. The aim of a turbine is to transform that energy into useful work. This is done by using a bladed design, each blade an aerofoil providing lifting force that drives the turbine in a circular motion, which in turn drives an electric generator. The amount of power extracted from the air blowing past the turbine is highly dependent on the swept area of the blades. The aerodynamics of the turbine are complex and because of that not all the energy can be transformed into useful work. The ratio of the power extracted to the power available is called the power coefficient and it's a measure of the efficiency of the turbine. In fact, the maximum theoretical power coefficient that a turbine can have is 0.59, known as the Betz limit. Because of this limitation, the design of the turbine is crucial to the performance of the finished product. The project involved designing 3D printing and testing a small wind turbine. We had some design constraints. For instance, the turbine had to fit in a 40 by 15 by 10 cm box and it had to consist of a single printed part. The first decision we made was to go for a two-bladed design with 40 cm diameter. Uh, we were conservative at this point because we wanted to avoid unexpected results. We also decided to use two different airfoil sections, SD6040 at the root and SD6043 throughout the rest of the blade. This was a compromise. The thicker airfoil at the root of the blade provided a stiffness and ensured a structural integrity, while the thinner section provided better aerodynamical perform performance. We also used X-foil, an interactive program for the design and analysis of uh, subsonic airfoils, to predict and optimize the performance of the chosen sections. All the parts in the turbine have the same angular velocity, but the actual speed at which it moves increases as we move away from the center. A very important parameter in wind turbine design is the tip speed ratio, or TSR, which is the ratio of the speed at the tip of the blade to that of the incoming wind. We had a limitation in terms of the revolutions per minute allowed, which translated to a maximum TSR of about 5.2. We knew that the power coefficient increases with TSR, but we chose the TSR to be 4.5 in order to have a safety margin, just to be on the safe side. Moreover, because of the difference in wind speeds along the blade, we had to change the twist and core length to ensure optimal performance at all points. We computed these calculations with Schmidt's equations, due to their higher accuracy. In order to ensure the blade had the desired performance at the design conditions, we ran simulations in Q-Blade, which also allowed us to compare iterations of the final design. For the structural analysis, we made a simple MATLAB script, which modeled the turbine as a beam and assumed the worst-case scenarios. With this, we found that our turbine was indeed stiff enough and that it had small tip deflections. When we were thinking about the general design, we found a recently discovered phenomenon which states that the tubercles of large bombs on the leading edge of an aerofoil can improve its aerodynamics. It was first discovered when looking at the fins of humpback whales. Whale fins have irregularities and are thought to have a hydrodynamic function. The tubercles effectively delay stall, the point at which a large portion of lift is lost and drag increases. We decided to use these features at the leading edge of the root of the blades because this is the region that moves at lower speeds. As such, we expect the tubercles to delay stall and generate more lift at the root. Once all the decisions were made, we had to draw the turbine. We used the software Creo Parametric for that. Simple simulations were also made in Creo to ensure that the blade could perform in the design conditions with little blade deflections. With the design completed and engineering drawings printed, the next step was to bring our ideas to life. 
The turbine is made of two parts. In addition to the 3D printed two-bladed turbine, there's a metal core inside the blade hub that's used to attach the entire assembly to the wind tunnel testing rig. The first thing we did was to manufacture the metal piece for the hub. We parted the core from a large aluminium piece and used the manual metal turning machine with a lathe to make the piece into a perfect cylinder with the correct axial dimensions. It's not <laughs> then we drilled the main axial hole. To get the desired hexagonal shape, we programmed coordinates into a CNC milling machine to mill flat surfaces onto the cylinder. Finally, we drilled a hole in the side for a grub screw to enable secure attachment to the testing rig. We also chamfered the top edges to ease the tight clearance fit between the core and the hub when inserting the metal core. The final product was a shiny, accurately machined aluminium core with a centered keyway hole suitable for a 5x5mm British standard key. With the core completed, we had to manufacture the turbine itself. The two-bladed design was 3D printed in a single piece with a vertical orientation to minimize the surface inaccuracies, particularly at the leading and trailing edges. Fresh off the printer, there was significant surface roughness due to limitations of the printer. We removed this roughness by using sandpaper of different grain sizes in order to improve the finish and thereby reduce skin friction drag and increase the performance of the blade. We had the option to treat the surface of the blades with acetone to further improve the smoothness, but after trying it on an old turbine print to see the effects, we decided against it. Once all the manufacturing stages were completed, it was time to test the turbine. Testing took place in the Donald Campbell wind tunnel at Imperial College London. The turbine was secured to the shaft that was connected to a torque transducer so the power extracted by the turbine could be measured. The measurements were to be taken at four different wind speeds, starting from free spin and then gradually applying brakes to the shaft to see the power output at different revolutions per minute. Our turbine did not self-start at the lower testing speeds, but with a little push and a higher wind speed we were happy to see the blade spinning. The first test run at 6 meters per second had to be stopped early because the turbine started to stall when the brakes were applied. This was not surprising as we had not designed the turbine for such low speeds and low revolutions per minute. On the contrary, our design TSR was 4.5 which predicted the maximum power output to be at around 2600 rpm, a safe margin away from the maximum allowed rpm of 3000. Once we increased the wind speed, the turbine finished the other tests at 8, 10 and 12 meters per second without any problems. Our turbine performed best in the 12 meters per second test, which was the one it was actually optimized for. It achieved a maximum power output of 22.9 watts, giving a power coefficient of 0.176. This maximum power was recorded at 2800 RPM, or a tip speed ratio of 4.9, which was very close to our design TSR. At this point, we were wondering what effect the tubercles were having on the performance of the blade, so we wanted to test again without the tubercles at the root. We went back to the workshop and sanded them down. After making sure we had a clean, smooth blade, we repeated the testing. We found that we could barely even start the 8 meter per second test before the turbine stalled. This was not the case before, indicating that the tubercles helped delay stall, just as we expected. We also observed a decrease in power output. In the second test at 12 meters per second, the turbine produced 21.2 watts, giving a power coefficient of 0.163. Compared to the previous test, the tubercles actually increased the power output of our turbine by up to 10%, proving that the tubercles featured in the bio-inspired design have in fact increased the turbine's performance. The design choice turned out to increase lift near the root, which generated the extra power. If we designed another turbine in the future, it would be interesting to try having tubercles along a greater length of the leading edge. Also, the very small tip deflection during testing indicated a high stiffness, allowing future experimentation with a shorter cord length at the root to reduce drag without compromising the structural integrity of the blades. Designing a wind turbine is indeed a complex process that requires many compromises. This project has proven to be a unique experience we were given an opportunity to apply all of our knowledge to a practical task and be creative about the design within the set constraints. It also made us more familiar with wind power, an important renewable energy source. With the increasing demand for clean energy, let's not underestimate the great power of wind.